Engineering in Ohio. In 1995, he earned an MS Electrical Engineering and Applied Physics, and in 2001, he earned a PhD in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, both from Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. He is the recipient of a Top 40 Under Age 40 Award by Cranes Cleveland Business in 1999, and the Clinical Translation Award at the second annual Biomems and Biomedical Nanotechnology World 2001 meeting in 2003. Dr. Oli was selected as a recipient of the TR100, which features the world's 100 top young innovators as selected by Technology Review, the, Massachusetts, the MIT Magazine of Innovation. In 2004, he was presented the NASA Group Achievement Award for his work on Harsh Environment, MEMS. In 2005, Dr. Roy was named as a who, who is Who in Biotechnology by Cranes Cleveland Business. In 2005 and 2007, he was recognized as a Cleveland Clinic Innovator. In 2009, he was nominated for Biotechnology Industry Organization's Biotech Humanitarian Award, which is given in recognition of an individual who has used biotechnology to unlock its potential to improve the, the earth. In 2012, he was presented the Rising Star Award by Bay Bio Pantheon, and in the same year, he received the Innovation Pathway 2 Award from the Food and the FDA. Most recently, he was recognized as a fellow by the Applied Innovation Institute in 2013. Dr. Roy. Thank you for that uh, introduction and thanks to all of you for this auspicious day. Um, as I look around, you know, it comes back to me that kidney disease and the impact of kidney failure is a very personal uh, impact on the friends, families, and the patients themselves. So we honor Mrs. Venkatesan, but there's a number of you as well who are, who are directly affected and you should know that Many of us, Dr. Abraham and others, are always uh, working uh, in some way, in our own way, to address the challenges of kidney failure. So today I'll tell you a little bit about our work but in, uh, in kidney regeneration, but to complement what uh, Dr. Abraham said, I'm not a nephrologist. I hang around with a lot of nephrologists, including Dr. Abraham. But what I learned was kidney disease and kidney failure has been growing at an astounded rate around the world. And while many of us have that knowledge of kidney disease now, it's fair to say that many of us who did not experience it directly, especially those of us who were not coming from the clinical community, had no idea of its burden on the patient and others. Yeah. So it occurs to me that we should always take a moment to appreciate the efforts of everybody that's trying to raise awareness. And this awareness is so important to move forward. And I think what Tanker is doing uh, through some of the activities that I saw this morning, events like this, is really important and you guys should congratulate <coughs> yourselves. Not many places in the world do this. So I'd like to share with you my perspective on kidney regeneration. I've titled it, you know, View from the Kidney Project, something we work on. So kidney regeneration, we don't know much about it. We know about heart regeneration. We may know something about livers. We know even something about pancreas. But not many people talk about kidney regeneration. That's a missing gap. But you look at the statistics, it's astounding. So let me start off by refreshing us on sort of like, what do the kidneys do? <coughs> Many of us know the main function of kidneys. Maybe we can take that little cross off. But which is the removal of waste products. Hmm? Yeah. So I think you have to just press that X on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So what we, do, what we don't often realize for the lay people is that kidneys have a host of functions. It's not just one function, which is to go and pass urine. Yeah. Yeah. Kidneys actually have six or seven functions. And when we go to the bathroom 
and excrete toxins, that's just but one. So what are some of the other functions? You help produce hormones. You help regulate blood pressure. You help maintain the pH of your blood. These are functions that we may not think about, but they're very critical to the function of a kidney. So when we start losing these functions, that's the beginning of chronic kidney disease. And as many of us who are affiliated with tanker know, it's a silent and insidious problem. People don't know they have it until it's often too late. So we go through a slow and progressive loss of function, and we grade them through one through four. Some of the screening that happens, that tanker does and others do, is to arrest kidney disease or slow down the progression by early detection awareness programs. But if one is so unlucky as to get to the stage five, you really have no choice. You have to have a replacement for your kidney function. So you have to get a transplant or you get dialysis. So let me share some statistics. And this is US statistics, which 